first light, the morning dew glistens across the boundless landscapes. Sunlight floods the tarmac. The track braces itself for impact as a grid of petroleum-fueled monsters begin to gather atop its hollowed surface. As the flag falls, rubber halos become one with the pavement, and so it begins the showdown. This is Forza Motorsport versus Gran Turismo, The Revenge. That's right, Turn 10 and Polyphony Digital's latest works return to Digital Foundry for a proper face-off. With the power of new generation consoles and years of meticulous work behind them, these games promise a new level of visual fidelity, but how do they stack up? It's East versus West on this special episode of Digital Foundry. Six years in the making, we'll explore these titans of racing featuring direct comparisons both in-game and around the track. We'll even bring real-world locations into the mix this time. So buckle up and let's ride. In the automotive world, manufacturers are known to invest significant money into research and development in the pursuit of performance. Using racetracks such as the Nürburgring, cars are compared and validated based on their performance statistics and specifications. This competitive spirit runs deep within these companies, fueling engineers and designers alike. It strengthens a brand's identity and its focus. The thing is, in most cases, these statistics have minimal influence on the ownership experience. People enjoy their cars without needing the best lap times on a racetrack. And this rings equally true of video game comparisons. How two different games stack up against one another is little more than an academic exercise, but for a select group, it can be exceptionally engaging. And this is the world of Digital Foundry. So it goes with Gran Turismo and Forza Motorsport. For decades, these franchises have competed, tackling problems in their own unique way. It may not influence your enjoyment of either game, but growing your understanding of how each developer tackles the subject can be enlightening. And it is this that I hope to present to you today. By pouring over these two games, we're given a look into what it takes to capture that authentic appearance of motorsports within a virtual world. But as with real cars, there is nuance that must be considered in building such a comparison, and many of the decisions require explanation. Now, before we get into those comparisons, let's begin by laying out the capture and settings guidelines used for both games. Each of them has been captured at 4K resolution using 60Hz output with HDR disabled. Forza Motorsport was captured on an Xbox Series X with the high resolution texture pack installed. When drawing comparisons, I will use each of this game's three graphical modes with a clear label indicating which mode is being used in a particular shot. This is to provide a wider view of what the game offers to players visually. With Gran Turismo, quality mode was selected, but this primarily only applies to replays and photo mode. Each game features a vast number of both fictional and real-world tracks, but only a subset of this content is shared between the two games. Our comparisons today will focus on the shared tracks between the two. Got it? Good. Then, without further ado, let's dive into our first comparison. And I'd like to begin here on one of my favorite tracks, The Jewel of Belgium, Circuit du Spa. Situated within the Provence of Liège, this stunning track is known for its dramatic curves and breathtaking scenery. The real-world track has been updated since its inclusion in Gran Turismo and Forza Motorsport, but there's still a lot to take in and appreciate. So let's start with a test drive around the course, directly comparing Gran Turismo 7 with Forza Motorsport. 
For this one, I've disabled the HUD on both games. I've opted to kick things off with the game's third-person camera perspective. We'll be driving the beautiful Toyota GR Supra RZ. I know this car can be divisive, but I am a fan of this BMW-derived sports car. For the initial lap, I selected deep blue metallic paint, though more on the paint color in a bit. The time of day is early morning and closely matched between the two games with comparable sun position. Each game has dynamic times of day with variable weather conditions, and we'll get into all of that over the course of this video. But before we make those comparisons, I think it's worth stepping back to appreciate just how beautiful these two games look in motion. The crisp blue skies and deep green hues of the forest are simply stunning. You can almost smell the morning dew across the manicured grass. It's a perfect day for a race. While driving, there are differences to note here that persist throughout the game, which I want to mention. Firstly, the general tone mapping and representation of color. Gran Turismo aims for what I describe as photorealism, as in realism seen through the lens of a camera. The skies have an exceptionally deep, eye-catching color that captures the look of a perfect day. Forza, however, takes a more grounded approach with a grey-tinged, dirtier tone that feels perhaps even more realistic in its own way. It's part of the signature Forza look, and it persists in the latest game. It's a matter of preference, of course, which will explain why the two games appear rather different when viewed side by side, but it's worth noting. Beyond this, you also notice subtle differences in the camera positioning within each scene, specifically when using the interior views. Now as we complete our first lap, I did want to draw your eye to something I found interesting. Watch the reflection on the car as we pass below the sign. Did you see it? I'll have more to say about the reflections later, but what we're looking at here is effectively cube maps versus ray tracing in this specific instance. So what's going on? Well, this gets into the heart of ray tracing in Forza. Firstly, if we pull up to the sign and stop, you'll note that it's perfectly sharp. What I think's happening is that the game simply cannot denoise and reconstruct the reflection aspect fast enough when driving at high speed, so you get this sort of image breakup. This does not occur with cube maps, however, which Forza of course also uses. You can see this if you look closely at the car, where Turn 10 combines cube maps with ray tracing. They basically only reflect objects within the game's BVH structure that are contained within this bubble surrounding your car. See what I mean? The sign above is a 3D model, but the rest of the environment is a cube map. It layers the two. The benefit of RT and Forza really lies in the fact that you can see other cars reflecting on one another while driving, something Gran Turismo cannot offer. With one lap complete, let's switch to the first person cockpit camera for a second run around the track. This is our first look at the interior spaces in each game, something we'll examine in more detail later on. But for now, my first impression is that Forza has made significant progress with this new entry versus Forza Motorsport 7. There's now a greater distinction between the various materials and the RTAO helps solve the occlusion issues that plagued prior installments. Of course, GT7 still has its own solution to ambient occlusion that is not ray traced, yet still very effective nonetheless. Both cars simulate reflections across the windshield glass, and both boast working gauges. That said, in Gran Turismo 7, there are more working gauges in general. Forza appears to be somewhat more static and less indicative of real-world performance in this aspect. The Toyota badge on the steering wheel also appears more reflective in Gran Turismo, which, according to footage of a real Super being driven, is accurate to the real car. You will also have noticed that GT7 uses the Japanese domestic version of the car, while Forza features the American left-hand drive model. Look closely and you'll spot subtle differences in how the materials interact with light as well as the shading. Furthermore, when racing in cockpit view, motion blur is disabled on Forza, while GT retains this effect. This can have an impact on the perceived sense of speed. Switch to an external camera though and motion blur is restored in Forza, it just seems to be disabled in the cockpit view. Which do you think is more realistic? Frankly, I think they both look excellent in this case, and as the Super is a new car that was added first to Forza Horizon 5, it isn't limited by older games in the series. But let's go ahead and step out and take a closer look at the Super while we're here. I initially started with deep blue metallic paint but despite choosing the correct factory color in both games, 
they appeared too different from one another. This is a comparison with a real version of the car from Doug DeMuro, by the way. Which one looks more accurate to your eyes? So I opted for red then, and it's here that we can begin to examine the car in more detail, starting with the gameplay camera, which is controllable via the right stick while driving. Viewing the Supra from all these different angles reveals a clear difference in how light interacts with the surface of the car's clear coat. Paint simulation is exceptionally difficult, and while Forza has improved since the last game, I still think GT7 produces a more natural, pleasing result. Furthermore, each game features excellent ambient occlusion. It's baked in the case of Gran Turismo 7, but Forza now has RTAO available in its performance RT and quality modes. This was something sorely lacking in Forza Motorsport 7, and it makes a big difference here with all the little crevices properly shadowed on each car. Before we zoom in closer, there is a nitpick I want to mention in regards to Forza that people have been talking about for years, and that's the wheel spin. Basically, when accelerating, Forza games rely on a texture trick, basically swapping the 3D wheel for a blurred texture. This is how Forza has always handled it, but it sticks out more in this new game, specifically due to an issue with wheels kind of seizing up as you accelerate. Gran Turismo 7, in comparison, appears to apply proper per pixel motion blur to the rotation of the wheel mesh itself, which looks far more realistic and natural in motion. But let's go ahead and zoom in. I'll now switch over to each game's photo mode, which allows you to walk around the car and examine it in greater detail. In this mode, ray traced reflections are enabled in Gran Turismo 7, which also means that the frame rate drops to 30 frames per second. Forza's photo mode also runs at 30 frames per second. The detail in both games seems to be consistent with the replays played after each race. Now, one of the first things I checked was the headlight assembly, and this is an area where Gran Turismo has always excelled, and GT7 is no exception. The intricacies of the plastic housing and various materials housed within appear far more realistic than we see on Forza. Of course, even if we switch over to the garage mode in Forza, which displays cars at the highest possible detail level, it still falls short. Around back though, take a look here at the bottom of the car. Both cars are using the shiny black material, but there's a noticeable difference in how light reflects off of it. Basically, these darker materials really tend to absorb light in the real world in a way that you don't see on the Forza side. It basically appears too bright. And I think very specifically, this behavior of reflections and light against such surfaces is why Forza doesn't always look quite as appealing when it comes to the paint shader quality. That being said, as I mentioned before, the paint quality is a step up from Forza 7, and I do think it generally looks pretty good while racing. We'll get into some other material types later, of course, but for now, let's leave it there. While we're on this track, however, I also snapped some beautiful shots of a ZR1 Corvette at the same time of day. With its beautiful yellow sparkling exterior, this really showcases GT7's paint system at its best. Plus you get those extra smooth body panel gaps, not to mention the headlight assembly once again. The thing is though, these headlights and tail lamps don't just look amazing in photo mode and replays, it also holds up really well in-game. Wheel-wise, both look pretty good this time around. In photo mode, they each use ray-traced reflections too, which helps accentuate the visual quality, though flaws are equally evident in both cases. We can also zoom in on other small details such as this front camera, or how about the side body panels with a slow pan up to the right-hand mirror? What do you think? If we check out another angle though, you'll notice that you can see the driver reflected in the mirror in Gran Turismo, not to mention the more robust light interactions on the paint surface. This is just in photo mode though. In game, both Forza and Gran Turismo utilize planar reflections on the mirrors, so all the mirrors are functional. The rear of the car is also interesting. The taillights seem to have more detail on the GT side versus Forza, which is a detail I'd like to see Turn 10 focus more on in the future, as it's something they've always fell a little short on. Even if you load up the highest detail version of the model in the Forza Garage, you can still see the issue. Oh, and how about a comparison of the carbon fiber on the car's rear wing? 
Still, aside from the light fixtures, compared to Forza 7, I think the new game compares so much more favorably against GT this time around in terms of material qualities on vehicles. But now I'd like to look more closely at the track itself. So firstly, neither version of Spa is consistent with the current iteration of the track, as we'll see momentarily. Straight away, it's clear that both games feature excellent tree and foliage quality surrounding the track, complete with proper shadows. The level of detail is excellent, if slightly different between the two games. I tried to match the time of day as closely as possible in these comparisons by comparing the angle of the sun and the resulting shadows. Viewing the side of the track, there are some discrepancies between the various buildings here, but I think this is also down to when each team scanned the track. Both are likely accurate to when they were scanned, at least from what I can tell. Now if we look at the pit crew, you'll notice that the equipment and personnel on hand differ between them, as was the case with Forza 7 vs GT Sport. Both games feature suitably packed crowds that vary based on the type of race. It'll be emptier when doing time trials, and more crowded during a proper race. Each one has an advantage over the other though if we look more closely. Forza for instance features much better overall crowd animation with every NPC waving their arms and moving around in a convincing fashion. Gran Turismo in comparison features more static members of the crowd but it has an advantage in terms of simulating people walking around the venue and up and down the aisles rather than just staying in one place like Forza. But in terms of overall animation, I think Forza is the winner on this one. Later in the track though, there is a section which reveals that the crowd casts shadows in Gran Turismo when in direct sunlight, whereas on Forza, they do not. A minor thing, but interesting. Now if we turn our gaze back to the track surface and grass itself then, I noticed some other interesting elements here. Firstly, textures appear sharper in Gran Turismo as it currently stands. While the texture pack is installed on Xbox, I get the feeling that it's not working properly as the PC version has much higher res textures than the Xbox version. Hopefully this will be fixed. Forza does at least use some sort of displacement mapping on certain surfaces, such as the grass here, to give it that extra depth. However, with the low res textures and reduced number of grass blades compared to GT7, I think it kind of winds up looking worse. The grass in Gran Turismo is simply fuller throughout and extremely noticeable while driving around the track, so it does have an impact on gameplay. Another interesting thing that Gran Turismo does is simulate lighting on rough surfaces. If we pan around in Forza, the track itself always has this evenly lit grayish tarmac appearance. Yeah, when driving directly towards the sun, it does produce a sun glare across the surface, but that's pretty much it. In comparison, Gran Turismo has these very subtle depictions of lighting across the tarmac surface, simulating rough reflections of light bouncing off the environment and reflecting back onto the tarmac. These diffuse specular reflections look really nice. In regards to other trackside detail though, I find that both games largely do a great job on this track. This iconic house situated directly to the left of the starting line is a great example. Between the surrounding foliage and the excellent texturing, I'd be happy with either version. There's other examples as well, showing subtle differences that may vary upon when the track was scanned. Of course, while racing, the foliage tends to look pretty darn great in both cases. But if you look too closely, it does reveal flaws in the tree textures that you'd never actually see while playing, thankfully. And this becomes extra apparent if you choose to zoom all the way in while in photo mode. It looks pretty bad, right? But again, this does not represent what you see while playing the game. It was just a fun experiment. There's another house down here that I found interesting as it really showcases the difference in atmospheric rendering between the two games. They both look pretty good to my eyes. GT has this brighter, crisper tone like a cool autumn day, while Forza feels like a hot, hazy summer afternoon in comparison. Oh, and another Forza advantage worth mentioning, the tire barriers. Not only do they appear more detailed in Forza, as you can see here, but they're also more interactive. If you run your car into a sidewall, the tires spill out complete with physical interactions across your car. In Gran Turismo, it's completely static in comparison. 
But really, in this first side-by-side -side comparison, I think it's fair to say that both games feature extremely detailed tracks that feel suitably realistic in terms of rendering features. They each have advantages and disadvantages over one another. Which brings us to the next part of our comparison, the Google Earth Factor. Using imagery from Google, we can see how the versions of Spa within each game stack up against the current iteration of the track. So let's go. We'll begin our tour right here. This very first shot suggests that Gran Turismo's track data might be newer than what's used in Forza. I'd be interested in knowing when each team visited the respective tracks for scanning. But I want to make it clear as we walk through this next section that everything we're seeing here is purely academic. Given the different dates from which all this data is pulled from, we can't really say which one is more accurate or the other. But I do still think looking at the two side by side is really interesting. So let's move forward. Here, looking at the signboard, once again, GT seems to more closely match the current Google data with its central light array and the left-hand mounted camera along the top edge. The Google data, however, shows that a large LED billboard has been added to the structure that seems to be missing in both games. But you can clearly see the white sign behind the LED billboard. Around the corner, looking down into the valley, however, this is where we see the most significant difference. The construction on the left-hand side of the track completely changes the look of this segment. Apparently, all this work occurred within the last year or so, so neither game features this change. No other area of the track has seen such a significant difference. The opposite side of the hill, then, is more interesting, as it shows something I've noticed throughout all of these comparisons, and that's the tree-lined silhouette, specifically where the blue sky intersects with the tops of the trees. I'd argue Forza has superior 3D tree rendering overall, but Polyphony Digital seems to have spent more time accurately capturing the distant shape and silhouette of the trees behind the track. It is not 100% perfect, mind you, but there's a marked difference here, and it's something we'll be seeing throughout the rest of this segment. Onto the straightaway, we see another difference in foliage density. There's more trees on the right side of the Forza shot versus the Google image, but they did, however, model this piece of cement sticking up on the right side, something not present in GT. But if we turn around and look back down the hill, I do think GT does a better job at capturing the landscape and scale of the scene. There are indeed fewer trees here in real life in all iterations of this track over the years, and you can catch a glimpse of the mountains behind the trees as a result. With forts of the trees are so thick that they block the view entirely. That said, they all look pretty darn good. And that is also true of this next shot. I noticed this time, a small structure is evident in GT and Google, but absent in the Forza version of this track. But who knows what it was like when they scanned the track. Around the bend, then, is another view out over the mountains that differs between the two games. The view is completely obscured in Forza. The same is true around the next corner where the distant mountains are concealed by this thicker tree line. The updated version of the track has different surface markings compared to either game as well, which is not entirely surprising. But if we really want to bring out the magnifying glass, take a look at these drainage grates. In this case, GT's version of the grates seems closer to the Google data here, but for all I know, they could have used this alternative type seen in Forza in the past. This sort of difference is always curious to me though. We're almost done with this section then, but here's the spa sign behind a fence that's about halfway around the track. And yeah, in this case, all three look very different. Nothing can match realism in this case. Down the hill though, we see our final comparison where once again, trees are used to hide the long distance view in Forza. It's something that popped up throughout this comparison and I'm really wondering why at this point. It's something that also applies to other tracks, as we'll see later in the video. So thus far, I feel like it's fair to say that the two games are pretty neck and neck in terms of advantages and disadvantages, but the battle's just heating up. Before we move to the next track, however, let's take one more lap at nightfall. As the sun sets, we're given a completely different look at Spa. I think it demonstrates how visually dynamic each game can be. Every car projects beautiful dynamic lighting that varies based on the make and model. 
cars with brilliant LED headlights, for instance, feature much brighter, cooler lights versus older cars with the softer, warmer incandescent bulbs. Things like taillights fire up the senses as they slice through the darkness. The dancing shadows fill the screen. Each game tackles this slightly differently, of course, but I think they both look rather striking at night. The most obvious difference seems to stem from the intensity of the lights. Gran Turismo seems to try to simulate the extreme ends of the dynamic range, which is borne out in its tremendous HDR presentation. Forza, however, takes a more even-handed approach to the lighting. The materials also react rather differently in this dark environment. The Forza car paint, for instance, takes on more of a matte finish, while GT retains its shine even in the dark. Spa is a unique circuit for night driving, however, as it does not feature trackside lighting throughout most of the course. Keep this in mind as we move forward. Now, if we jump into the cockpit, I think both games do an excellent job of simulating external lights playing off the dashboard as you drive around. When a driver pulls up behind you especially, their lights will shine into the cockpit, projecting light and shadows in real time. I also took a moment to pull over and check out the head and tail light intensity when isolated from other light sources, and this is the difference. Then it was time to take the vet out in the rain, which is extremely impressive in both cases. We'll look closer at the rain later in the video, but for now let's pay attention to how the two games handle it in the dark. Forza's most eye-popping feature is surely the rain droplets that form on the camera. This technique has been around for a long time now, but it's still beautiful and it gives the impression of droplets forming on the camera. Droplet movement is also determined by camera velocity, so they move dynamically as you race. Gran Turismo 7 does not feature this effect at all. What GT does have, however, are particles that are properly influenced by dynamic lighting. That is, you'll only really see the rain droplets when an actual light source is present in the scene, whether it's headlights or trackside lighting. It also means when there's a lot of light sources on screen at once, it can look really intense. In comparison, Forza's rain droplets seem to be visible all the time, even when the scene is completely dark. The benefit to this approach, though, is that when combined with the lens droplet technique, it does make the rain seem visually more intense, even if it's slightly less realistic. Then there's things like reflections, which are also handled very differently. Gran Turismo mostly relies on planar reflections, with some cube maps and screen space elements layered in, but Forza relies entirely on screen space reflections, which means when the source of light is occluded, all reflections just disappear. At night, that means it goes completely black. I'd also like to mention the dynamic time of day and weather featured in both games. I discussed this aspect in our Forza developer interview, and it's one of the key features for this new game that was absent in Forza 7 in prior installments. Essentially, for the first time, the time of day is truly dynamic across every single track. Shadows shift with the sun position and weather can change as you race. So I decided to park right here on Spa and observe. I let each game run for one hour to see how weather and light changes over the course of that day. I set both games to 24x speed, meaning one minute of capture equals one hour in the game. Based on this, I feel like GT's cloud formations and general world lighting are a lot more dramatic than Forza. However, Forza was tricky as the weather didn't change as much as I hoped even after capturing this sequence twice, but we know that's possible as it's definitely something that can occur in the game. Just keep that in mind when looking at this comparison. But here's the thing. GT does have different times of day on every track, but some tracks do not support the full 24 hour time cycle. Furthermore, not all tracks even support inclement weather. That means no rain. Forza in comparison allows both on every single track. So while GT does have an edge in terms of beauty, I think Forza wins in terms of availability of the feature. But okay, I think it's time we move on to our next destination. Watkins Glen International.
This beautiful circuit lives in New York and first opened in 1956. It has become home to many a racing fan and I'd like to begin with the sun low in the sky as we take our red MX-5 around for a lap. Compared to our last test, we're now given a taste of the game's lighting with just a little bit of sunlight in the environment. And it once again showcases a difference in approach between the two games. Firstly, this lap demonstrates the striking beauty of Gran Turismo's sky system. Polyphony poured a lot of time into simulating the sky dome, and it really shows. I was also struck once again by the dynamic range visible in the MX-5's taillights as it darts around the track. The intense red glow is utterly captivating. Forza, of course, is no slouch and takes a different approach to Watkins at night. They've set up spotlights around the course to minimize dark areas, so it's a less dramatic drive but arguably more realistic, as I'd imagine races on Watkins at night would indeed feature lights for safety purposes. As on Spa, all these lights cast shadows as well, so it gives the game a different but still dramatic look while racing. I will say that in this light, I think the GT car looks better as a result of its paint simulation. But, and we'll see this again in the daylight, Forza does seem to have more going on on the track. As we round the corner, be sure to check out the crowd here on Forza that's gathered along the top ridge of this hill. Which of the two do you prefer? But let's go ahead and shift time forward once again, this time during the day. Firstly, I want to take a quick look at the MX-5's interior in both games. You see, I prominently featured this in my previous video covering GT Sport and Forza 7, and since then, some Forza fans have reached out to suggest that the photo mode LODs used for the cockpit are somewhat reduced compared to the garage, so I figured I would compare GT in photo mode against the garage version of the Forza interior, so we're looking at the best quality possible on each model. And based on this, I actually think they're using pretty much the same basic geometry for both games, but there have been some improvements to materials and lighting. Forza 2023, for instance, improves upon the interior materials over Forza 7, and secondly, the addition of RTAO helps solve some of the occlusion shadow problems as well. In photo mode, GT7 also features improved material response to the surroundings. That said, for the highest quality models in each game, I think Polyphony Digital has done a better job with the interiors. However, Forza does have one trick up its sleeve, and it's the fact that the gameplay LOD is of much higher quality than GT. It's very difficult to actually see the interiors while playing, but if we rotate the camera while driving a convertible, you can tell that Forza has GT beat in this regard. But with that settled, I'd like to move on to a different car, one of my favorites in fact, the BMW E46 M3 dressed in silver. This time, we're racing at dawn, the sun peeking over the trees, bathing the land in its warmth. Perhaps more than anything we've seen yet, this track really showcases the difference in how light is depicted between the two games. It's also why I think people so strongly prefer one or the other, because they're aiming for completely different looks. For this comparison then, I've switched Forza over to its performance mode without ray tracing. The idea is that while it disables the ray tracing effects on the cars, it has a significant impact on rendering resolution. Basically, in RT performance mode, the game runs around 1584p, but regular performance mode allows them to increase this to a full native 4K, just like Gran Turismo 7. With this setting engaged then, you can see that the lines on the car become much cleaner and more defined. Of course, this is not 100% apples to apples. The Forza version of the car is from 2005, packing features such as parking sensors and LED taillights. These are missing on the 2003 variant featured in GT7. Inside the cockpit, the Forza version also features the sat-nav system, while the Gran Turismo version uses the more standard radio. Both cockpits look great, as we saw with the Supra. With the sun at a low position, both games need to rely heavily on dynamic lighting and shadows to illuminate the cockpit. Now, let's stop and move back to the external camera, and for this shot I've decided to switch ray tracing back on to ensure that the car can look its best. We're looking here at the M3 using the gameplay camera first, before we shift over to photo mode. The first thing that surprised me though is that despite using ray traced ambient occlusion, the panel gaps are less visible than I would have expected and less visible than what we saw in the Supra. It's extremely obvious if you look at the door gap. 
The wheels are also interesting because they do appear to be of slightly different sizes, even if the design is the same. The material used to build the wheel also differs between the two. As for the body color, I'm using the default silver for both models, but that might also vary due to the difference in model year between the two. Now let's get a little closer, shall we? Both cars look pretty good from this angle. The rear exhaust pipe seems to blend better with the car itself in GT, which is a little strange given that Forza has RTAO. You can also once again notice that the wheels are of a different size. If we stop and zoom in, the differences become more apparent. Beyond the material and reflection differences, the BMW logo seems to have more visible geometry edges in Gran Turismo, but as we angle the camera upward, the wheel arch itself has more geometry on GT. Up front, the two look remarkably similar, though the headlight washer option in the 2005 model is not present in Gran Turismo. One GT7 detail I really appreciate though is the look of the small incandescent bulb within its housing. It's very realistic and something they really got right in this game. How about the taillights? As usual, Gran Turismo has the advantage here, and this is still an area where I'd like to see Turn 10 evolve for future installments. Mainly because while driving, you see these lights all the time. If we step back and look at the track around the car though, I think both look excellent. As I mentioned, the lighting is very different, but they each successfully portray weather conditions that one might actually encounter at this track. Forza has a hazy appearance versus the clear skies of GT, and both work very well. I think the game looks fantastic in motion. The motion blur, the sense of speed, the lighting, it all works beautifully. But one thing I did notice is that Forza seems to have an increase in foliage density. Posts on social media got me thinking about this, as this specific track was used as a comparison point to show that GT has less complex environments. Which got me thinking then, how does it compare to the actual track? Thankfully, Mazda USA posted this video featuring Tom Long driving a hot lap around the track, and that footage turned out to be quite useful due to the camera position, so let's use that for a little comparison. Right away, all three are in sync. The metal cage used around the track is present across all of them, and the tower off to the right is there too. It's a very close match. The infield area also seems pretty impressive on both games, but each represent the look of what you might expect from the trackside area. If we pause here though, take a look. It's subtle, but I notice that the types of trees used in the scene in Gran Turismo more closely match the real life track. This singular tree here should not be depicted as a pine tree, as we see in Forza. Now, this might seem silly, but I do think that this is key to nailing the silhouette of the tree line. And this is a tricky thing, because like here, Forza's trees arguably look better visually than GT in this scene, but Gran Turismo is closer to matching the trees we see on the actual track. If we pause here, this is what I'm talking about. Look again at the tree line. There's trees leading into a small dip, which reveals a tower, followed by another small dip, and more trees. GT7 very specifically simulates this exact tree line. Forza, in comparison, features a far denser forest, boasting coniferous trees instead. It has more trackside detail in this instance, one could argue, but is it actually correct? And then here we have another instance where Forza's trees are much thicker. It looks more detailed, but in reality, you should be able to see through those trees as we see on the real track. How about that corner with the hill? This one is also interesting. It is again more detailed in Forza, but it's presented in a more realistic fashion in GT, so pick your poison. Gosh, I almost feel silly nitpicking either one at this point. Just look how good these games look. Seriously, don't let these nitpicks stand in the way of appreciating its beauty. Both developers really did a tremendous job here. As we continue then, we'll see it again on this corner. The gap in the tree line is perfectly represented in GT, not to mention the tree types themselves. You should get the picture by now, and this is not meant to dunk on Forza's iterations of Watkins, because let's be honest, it looks visually fantastic. This whole comparison really arose from discussions around the background detail, which resulted in me digging into this real life footage. 
That's when it became clear that in some cases, a lack of perceived detail in one game is actually due to slavish devotion to the real world location. But how about we talk about something Forza does exceptionally well in comparison, just to shift the mood, shall we? Damage and dirt. Forza's hazy look isn't just for show after all, this game features significantly more advanced damage modeling. Now this isn't burnout of course, so the cars don't actually break apart, but Forza features an impressive paint layering system along with realistic crumpling that produces, I think, rather impressive results. For this test, I basically drove around Watkins like a moron, slamming into walls and other cars at full speed, scraping the wall and at one point even flipping the car. It's silly stuff, but it felt great, and the sense of speed you get before slamming into a wall makes you grit your teeth in anticipation. I tried the same thing with GT7, and the results are far more sedate. Yes, the game offers similar features, but they're less pronounced. When compared to Forza, after a lap of reckless driving, I think it's clear that Forza focuses more on capturing that damage and dirt a player might sustain during a crazy race like that. The only thing I noticed in GT that Forza didn't seem to replicate is the broken plastic on the headlight, but everything else looks a lot more busted up in the Forza example. The GT car looks like it had a bad day in the Walmart parking lot, while Forza appears properly smashed up as if it took place in a destruction derby. Thinking of crashing, while gathering comparisons for this video, I noticed something else, specifically related to the AI and its ability to react to unexpected situations. What I mean is, when capturing, I would often stop in the road to line up shots, and I noticed that in GT, this would result in AI cars slowing down and carefully maneuvering around my parked car. They reacted and avoided as you'd expect. In Forza, however, I had many a shot spoiled as a result of the AI just plowing right into my car. Yeah, I could do the time trials, but this reduces the crowd detail, which is why I wanted some cars on the track. Basically, I found that Drivatars tended to be more aggressive and unable to avoid accidents in situations like this. They just plow on ahead no matter what. I also noticed this sort of aggressive behavior while just playing the game. Given internet behavior these days, I suppose the Drivatar system really is working as intended. But what about getting down and dirty? If you've been racing all day and get a little hungry, how about some donuts? So I hopped in a Dodge Viper and let loose, both in the grass and the dirt. Thanks to social media, I was given this idea to test out the particles kicked up when driving around off-road, and the results are interesting. My thoughts? Forza kicks up more alpha particles such as dust clouds than GT, but GT seems to produce more particles such as stones and blades of grass. I love the way that grass blades temporarily collect on the tarmac in GT as you kick them up. It's a nice detail. But Forza does a really great job, especially with things like tire tracks and the smoke on pavement. Plus, the cars themselves actually show dirt after racing in a way that you don't really get in GT. How much dirt is kicked up does seem to vary based on the type of material, though. So keep that in mind if you want to try it for yourself. But okay. One more thing to do here at the Glen, and that's play with car materials. You see, each game allows you to modify the appearance of your car using a variety of options, including paint, which allows us to test out both shiny and matte materials alike. So I kicked things off with a chrome-plated RX-7, one of my favorite cars of this era. I would say both games produce attractive results. The chrome is suitably shiny and plays nicely with each of the game's cube maps, which is an interesting point to make here because you might notice in the gameplay shot, Forza's side mirrors do not reflect in the body of the car despite using Performance RT. Well, it turns out that ray traced reflections are not applied to ultra shiny surfaces such as chrome. If we switch to photo mode, you'll see the same thing persists here. You can see the mirror in the glass, weirdly enough, but not in the chrome. Instead, we only see the game's cube maps. In GT7, of course, you don't have ray tracing in the gameplay camera, but you do get it in photo mode, and thanks to the clarity of this material, all we can see is the reflection. And that reflection is entirely ray traced, so it shows the simplified world represented within the BVH. This got me thinking about the ray tracing features in general, though. 
The thing is, RT is most visible in the replays with the cinematic camera angles in both games. It's pretty tough to catch while actually racing. And where GT really differs from Forza in terms of how it handles ray tracing is that it supports highly rough materials as well as mirror-like materials. So if we switch to a, another metallic car with a high surface roughness, you'll notice that you still get RT reflections in GT. My point here is that the reason I think we don't see any sort of ray tracing in-game in Gran Turismo is that their implementation not only includes more of the environment, but it also supports much rougher materials, which is significantly more expensive to render. There's no way they were going to get this running at 60 FPS on a PS5 which is one of the reasons I've wanted a PC version of GT7 in the first place. Of course, while the RT reflections in Forza are extremely limited in terms of usability, Turn 10 did implement something much better, and that's ray-traced ambient occlusion. As I mentioned before, this basically solves a lot of issues that prior Forza games suffered from in regards to occlusion shadows, but this debug footage shows that it actually extends to many other areas of the visuals. The differences are largely subtle when compared to the normal performance mode, but it's a nice improvement. I just wanted to mention this though because it's an important distinction in understanding how different sorts of ray tracing implementations can differ from one another. But what about the opposite, matte materials? Now this is an interesting one, and it actually looks pretty good in gameplay in both games. GT's paint seems to absorb a little more light than Forza as you drive around, but honestly they both work pretty well. Any other differences on this car come from things like the taillights and such, just different depictions of the RX-7 in each game. There is one weird caveat in Forza though, and it's the hood camera. When using a matte car like this, if you switch to the hood cam, reflections appear as if it were glossy paint. Perhaps a bug? Either way, it's not what you'd expect given the material type. But okay, I think we spent long enough here on the Glen, so let's move across the country to the dusty world of Laguna Seca. Laguna Seca is one of the world's most legendary racetracks, and it's also a track that has been featured prominently in video games for decades. Forza and Gran Turismo 7 are no exception. I'd like to begin with some gameplay around the track in the Corvette ZR1 again. Its gorgeous yellow paint is a perfect fit for this deserty environment, and this is an interesting track as the two games tackle it in a different way. You see, in GT, Polyphony has opted to model the track based on what seems to be an early point in the season when there's still plenty of greenery visible, and the track itself is in pristine condition. Forza, however, seems to represent the track later in the season, the way most people know it, dirty, dusty, and brown. Both, however, do a pretty good job with the overall detail level in the surroundings. The dramatic cloud simulation and the detail in the landscapes work beautifully together. In the case of this track, there's definitely a sense that Forza's iteration features more overall trackside detail. So how about we pull out our trusty companion, Google Earth, and find out. Straight away, both games look excellent, closely matching the design of the real track. Obviously things like banners will differ between the two. But if we stop and look to the sign, you'll see the same house, the light poles and everything in both games, and Forza boasts significantly more detail on the rock surface. However, GT seems to be slightly more accurate in terms of the overall object positioning in this scene. And that's very much something I noticed while testing this track. GT does feel slightly more accurate again, but Forza boasts more granular detail overall. But that's not always the case. If we turn to the left here, you'll see that the distant hills in Forza actually seem to more closely match the Google Earth shot. The sky rendering also very accurately communicates that dusty atmosphere. And how about the famous tire arch? Both look excellent for sure, but the iconic dusty hills again seem to be a near perfect match to Google on the Forza side. GT however has slightly more accurate foliage placement along the top of the ridge, so it's a case of slightly more visible detail versus increased accuracy. While we're here I wanted to stop and zoom in and look closely at the hill texture. What do you think? And what about the WeatherTech sign? This one really caught my eye because Forza seems to rely more heavily on LODs, or at least the LODs don't properly change when in this mode. It's significantly less detailed than what we see in GT. 
Oh, and while we're zooming in, may as well look at the ground textures, right? Things look pretty good when viewed up close. The paint strip down the middle is a little different, but they're both comparable. But if you shift over to this, GT does seem to have a resolution advantage, but the texture itself looks a little more tiled. Both look excellent while actually racing, of course. If we continue around the track, there's nothing too interesting here outside of some minor changes between all three. But then there's the bridge around the corner, and this one really caught my eye because it is noticeably more detailed in Forza, and this is a shot that many people online have used to showcase the fact that Forza does have more detail. And indeed, that's absolutely the case, but when compared to the real photo, it does seem that GT is a little more accurate, if less visually impressive. Something consistent with our findings so far. And we see that again if we continue up the hill here, looking out over the mountain range. Now this obviously goes outside of the track, but GT seems to again match the distant mountain detail in terms of the silhouette. Plus there's a lot more foliage out there. If we flip around and look back out over the track though, we get another look at how the two games handle distant lods while in photo mode. But really, the truth is that the track looks really good in both cases, and my overall impression is that while GT perhaps more closely matches things in terms of placement versus the real track, Forza has an increase in detail density, and it's a pretty striking track to race on. Still, step back, check it out from the gameplay camera, and I think it's fair to say that both games did a great job with Laguna Seca. But let's take this same Corvette over to another course, the Nürburgring. Well, at least partially. You see, in its current state, Forza is missing the Nordschleife, the layout I used six years ago when comparing Forza 7 to GT Sport. Thankfully, we can still take a tour around the GP circuit, which itself is a nice course. So while the Corvette is certainly always enjoyable to drive, I've actually come to this course for a completely different purpose, and that's to check out the rain. Yes, it's time to talk about precipitation once again, and this time I'd like to go into the two different approaches deployed in each game. Why do they look the way they do, and how do they compare? I'd like to begin here. Forza Motorsport's approach to rainy weather is focused on creating an eye-catching, high-intensity racing experience in the rain. And frankly, it looks pretty darn good in motion. The reflective tarmac, droplets forming on the virtual camera lens, the particles generated from the wheels as you plow through the storm all look amazing. Couple that with the dynamic cloud simulation, and yeah, it's a very impressive feat. But if we're looking at this from a realism perspective, there are some issues specifically with the tarmac. It's too reflective and too even. If we cut over to this footage, which was actually recorded over on Spa, you can see that during rainy weather, a track does not turn into a perfect mirror as we see in Forza. It looks cool for sure, but it's not realistic, I'd say. It kind of gets into the discussion around accuracy versus flashiness. Forza's approach is flashy and intense. In comparison, Gran Turismo takes a very different approach that I would certainly describe as less flashy. There are no lens effects. The track itself is not a mirror, and particles from other vehicles are somewhat restrained. It just looks a lot less quote-unquote intense than Forza in motion. However, I'd argue it's also more realistic with its representation of water on a tarmac surface. It's extremely realistic and impressive to behold. If we look at the Formula One clip here, pay close attention to the tarmac surface visible during this wet race. Notice how it lacks mirror-like reflections we might see on, say, a public road during the rain. The track surface is smooth, well taken care of, and less prone to puddles. I think that's what GT7 is trying to recreate here. The key here is that most of the track uses highly diffuse specular reflections combined with mirror-like reflections applied only to puddles where water collects. The skylighting in particular plays a significant role here in the presentation, and you see it everywhere in the rain. Dynamic elements such as brake and headlights also shine brightly across the surface, but beyond this, the grassy areas also become saturated as it rains, resulting in muddy conditions. 
something Forza does not seem to replicate. If we switch to cockpit mode and compare then, you can see another issue with using SSR, and that's when the wipers occlude the scenery, it actually disturbs the reflection. Remember, when screen space information is removed from view or briefly occluded, the reflections disappear. That's what's happening here. I'd love to see a future update where ray traced reflections are also expanded to include things like the wet tarmac, at least on PC, rather than pure SSR. While we're in the cockpit though, I noticed that GT7's motion blur is visible on the wiper blades even, which is a really nice touch. The wipers in both games are of course fully functional, wiping away droplets as they collect on the windshield. I think it looks great in both cases. Though for this particular effect, my heart is still with Drive Club. Naturally, droplets also form on the car paint as you would expect. I did notice, however, when driving with the heaviest amount of rain in both games that Forza boasts much thicker fog effects in Gran Turismo. The weather basically feels more dynamic overall. But even still, this comparison remains rather difficult once you begin to actually drive around. Forza's flashiness really does pay off. The water spray from the opposing cars and the droplets on the game's camera look great and accentuate that feeling of driving through a rainstorm. GT7's tarmac is very realistic, but the spray effects are less convincing and what's worse, a full grid of racers causes the frame rate to dip in Gran Turismo 7, while Forza, which can have three more cars on the track at once, never skips a beat. It's rock solid. Thinking of frame rate though, one thing I found interesting is that both games have alternate frame rate options. On Xbox, Forza delivers a locked 60 frames per second in both Performance and Performance RT mode, but a 30 FPS visuals mode is also available, much like the prior Forza Horizon games. Xbox Series S, of course, does not have a Performance RT mode. The curious thing is that with Gran Turismo 7, I think it would actually be possible to implement in-game ray tracing at the quality we see in replays if 30 frames per second were added as an option. Though who knows, if the PS5 Pro is real, maybe it'll get added into gameplay at 60 FPS. In the here and now, however, Polyphony has opted for 120 Hz output. The quality mode with VRR averages around 80 to 100 frames per second while maintaining the same high resolution. The performance mode though drops to 1080p and delivers a locked 120 FPS experience. I'd love to see Turn 10 offer a high performance mode in the future on Xbox, perhaps using the performance mode as a base, but with a lower target resolution? Either way, it's interesting stuff. The other video comparison related thing though is HDR support. Forza has good HDR support, I would say, but let's be clear here, Gran Turismo 7 has one of the best HDR implementations in any game ever made. If you buy a new OLED TV, you've got to play GT7. It's really just that good when it comes to HDR. But stepping back then, we visited a number of tracks during the course of this video, but there's actually a lot more in each game, and the original tracks tend to be even more beautiful than the real circuits. Forza's Hakone track, for instance, is absolutely stunning, especially at night. The vibrant colors, sweeping hills, and gorgeous mountainous backdrop really hold up well. GT, of course, has its own spectacular original tracks. But now it's time to test your knowledge with everyone's favorite new game show, Name That Game. Welcome everyone to Name That Game, where I show you a series of small screenshots from either Forza Motorsport 2023 or Gran Turismo 7, and you guess which game it's from. And I'll reveal the results in an upcoming episode of DF Direct Weekly, so let's go. If you wish to join along, it's easy to play. Check the description on this video and there you'll find a quiz. Click the link and choose Gran Turismo or Forza for each of the images as listed, but that's it. Just click Gran Turismo or Forza on each question and then submit away. Once again, I'll reveal the results on a future DF Direct Weekly and we'll see how well the audience did.
There are no winners in this game, however, so don't expect any grand prizes. We're not giving away cars here. It's nothing more than a little experiment. By working on this video, I posted some shots on social media with the watermark switched, and many people fell for it. They thought the Forza image was GT and vice versa, so I can't wait to see how everyone else does. But let's go ahead and start wrapping up this video, because there's one more thing I want to discuss here, and this kind of gets more into opinion territory. That's the basic user experience and general progression through it. You see, with Forza 2023, when you compare it to something like GT7, or prior Forza Motorsport games for that matter, the entire menu system and the campaign on offer here feels shockingly bare bones. There's just no passion to be found here. When we spoke with Turn 10, they described the campaign as a mode where you deepen your relationship with a singular car. You put the time in, you upgrade it, and it becomes yours. But I don't really feel that in the end. It's just a simple menu with a handful of highly repetitive races. There's no variety here. It's basically the same thing over and over again with just more powerful cars and slow progression. All the menus look and feel the same and there doesn't seem to be a lot of depth behind it. In comparison, GT7, while it certainly has its flaws, especially early on with those ridiculous microtransactions, it presents an interface in this campaign that really pulls players in. Whether you're hardcore or casual, it's designed to immerse players in the culture and the history around racing. The intro movie is a simple little thing, something most people will only ever watch one time, but it's beautifully edited and crafted. It takes you on a journey through a century of racing in just a few minutes, and by the time you reach the main menu, you're ready to go. And once you enter that main menu, you're presented with this beautiful, responsive UI. The thing is, in Forza, when you go to buy a new car, it almost feels as if you're just checking a website. You click through a list, select a car, and you're offered limited information and options for viewing it. It's very clinical. In GT7, however, every brand has what amounts to a small museum's worth of info. The history of the brand, video presentations on specific concepts, bespoke information for every car, and this lively, fast-loading 3D background that changes on every screen. It's so dynamic and beautifully crafted. I've spent a lot of time just flipping through these screens, watching videos, learning about these brands, and hearing what different people have to say. It's really fun and interesting stuff. And when it comes to actually playing the game, the single-player campaign is primarily focused on the cafe system, which, love it or hate it, takes you through this history of different cars, helping you understand and appreciate each one. There's real context here, and it's not just another text box. There's also variety, too, in the different events that you play. There's the circuit experience, special events, missions, license tests, and more, all designed to help you appreciate each car while learning the tracks. I know GT struggled during the PS3 days with interface design, but they really got it right in GT7. Not to mention the ultra-quick loading in and out of the races, much faster than what you get in Forza. Now, in a sense, this all kind of reminds me of GT Sport versus Forza 7, where GT Sport was a lot more limited compared to prior GT games, and Forza 2023 feels similar if you look at something like Forza 7. And honestly, based on the response from the Forza community, I think I'm being really gentle here as well. This is as duty-free an opinion as one can give on this situation. That said, the core racing is still really good, the new tire system is great, everything feels good to play, the package just needs more love. Forza Horizon has this energy, but Forza Motorsport needs to find it once again. Plus, there's the long-standing issues with some classic cars, such as the Nissan Silvia S15, and the VW Golf R32. While some aspects of the models have been touched up, they're still based on the incorrect proportions seen in Forza games dating back to 2005. It's an issue Forza fans have complained about for years, and it still hasn't been fixed in this new game. Really though, I could go on and on here. There's the audio, for instance, which I didn't get to discuss. I think it's great in both games specifically in regards to engine sounds and various sound effects, but then there's the other side of the coin with things like music, which Forza is lacking. 
but for some, they'd actually prefer not having music. There's the different driving models, which I don't feel fully qualified to discuss personally. There's things like differences in the camera work between the replay systems. There's the fact that both games are designed to be played online and cannot be fully enjoyed without a server connection, and that is a huge shame. And then there's things like the downgrade from reveal to final game with Forza, which I know a lot of folks were disappointed with too. There's just so much to talk about with these two games. Even if we couldn't cover every single aspect in detail though, hopefully there was enough here to enjoy and appreciate. But as I sit here trying to wrap this video up and stop myself from rambling further, I wanted to spell out my final thoughts. I was initially hesitant to give a final opinion on these games, but in the end, I think I need to do so. You see, both titles have a lot to offer on the visual front. I think that no matter what I say, you should continue to enjoy either or both games preferably. My opinion should have no impact on your enjoyment. It is not a reflection of your feelings on these games. So after speaking with the entire DF team, and based on their experiences playing both games as well, we have decided in unison that Gran Turismo 7 gets the DF nod. This is our pick for the most visually striking game of the two. Forza is of course still gorgeous in its own right, don't get me wrong, but Polyphony Digital has taken the top spot. And remember, this isn't even about the hardware. GT7 could run on an Xbox just as Forza could run on a PS5. Whichever game you play, however, there's little doubt that both teams have poured their souls into creating these games. Creating something at this level and this quality is exceptionally difficult. Even the smallest of era is picked up by the hardcore. And over the last two weeks, pulling these games apart, my respect and admiration for both Polyphony Digital and Turn 10 has only increased. And I cannot wait to see where they go next.